So you describe it as a historical documentary. like that it's nice that's a nice university response and a historical documentary about housing anyone else want to respond homes through history homes through history homes throughout history homes throughout That's a good one. Anything else? Homes development. The development of homes. The development let's call it of housing. The development of housing. Anything else? Housing designs. Housing designs. I like that one too. Housing designs. Anyone else want to share? Back. Ideas about the housing future. Oh! Oh, I like that one. I like that one a lot. Ideas. Ideas about housing. Future. Or the future of housing. Right? Or the future of housing. Anyone else? The housing impact. The housing impact. What about housing impact on history? Housing's housing <laughs> impact <laughs> on history. I like that one. Instead of history having an impact on housing. Housing has an impact on history. I like that one a lot. <clears throat> the necessity of housing. The necessity of housing. The necessity of housing. These are all good university responses. I really appreciate and happy about these responses. Let me know that you were reading. And you're not only reading, but you are actually taking in consideration what this is really talking about. So, <clears throat> when we talk about housing, we look at housing normally from a physical perspective. We look at housing from a physical perspective. We think of a place that has, what, a couple of doors, some windows, a roof. It's divided in rooms. A place that offers privacy, safety, safety, security, protection, right? And that's how we, we often look at homes. That's one way to look at housing, the idea and concept of homes. Another way to look at it is what? We should look at the house from the mental perspective. The mental, the mental perspective, or the mental, mental benefits that housing provides. Not only does it provide us with physical protection and security, shelter, this idea of shelter, which is a word I would like to use here, shelter, not only is this shelter physical, but it's also mental. Knowing that you have a place to live is a mental concept. It's a mental necessity that we need to know that at the end of the day, 
no matter where we are, we have a place that we can call home. If you remember, we started this chapter off, the first thing I did was what? No, what's the first thing I did to start this chapter? Look up the concept of home. What's the first thing I did to start this chapter? Of what? Uh, of Dorothy, right? Dorothy, yeah. and she's doing what? Clicking her heels. There's no place like home. Yeah. There's no place like home. That movie, The Wizard of Oz, is a very impactful movie, and it has a lot of political and social meaning, especially in the American context, but I would argue that it has a lot of meaning also in a global concept, concept perspective, especially now, as, as, as underdeveloped countries are starting to become developing countries, and people are changing um, and, and really looking at defining or redefining this idea of home. There's no place like home. So when there's no place like home, Dorothy was really saying that not she really wasn't talking about the physical house, right? Because if you if you if you watch the movie, Dorothy's journey, although she did some walking, was not a physical journey, it was a mental journey. And, a, and if you watch the movie, and I really suggest that you watch the movie, Dorothy finds friends as she was looking to get back home. And these friends are symbolic of something that is very important, a necessity in the human psyche, which is comfort, which is convenience, which is security, which is shelter. Shelter. When we think about shelter, we look at shelter from this physical perspective, but shelter has a lot more than to do with than physicality. Shelter is also a mental idea to know that you have your own bedroom, that you have your own privacy, that you have a place where you can be vulnerable. Shelter is a place where you know that when you go there, there are going to be people that have things that are in common with you and people who are looking out for your better interest. People who love you, who care about you. People that you can be vulnerable around, that you can put your shield down and your sword down. Because when we leave that shelter, all of us, put, we, we pick up, as we walk out the door, we pick up our, our what? Our invisible shelter. A psychological shelter, uh, excuse me, a psycholog psychological shield and a, a psychological sword. And by evidence, the way you guys drive, that shield and sword is pretty big. Right? Yeah. Because, because we're around people, what? That we can't really feel vulnerable with. So home is a place for us to to not only be protected from the elements and be protected from uh, 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 animals and the rain, but it's also a place, in other humans, right? It's also a place where we can recharge. We, we, we can put down that shield, put down that sword, and we can just relax and be free. We don't have to worry about how we look, right? We can just put on our favorite pajamas. Our little fa favorite, some of you probably wear pink bunny slippers. You don't want to see this, <laughs> right? It's a place where, you, and you don't care. Everybody that's in that home with you, you don't care if they see you like that because you can be vulnerable with them. You can open yourself with them. They can see you at your worst. They can see you at your best. They can see you when you're just normal. They can see you when you're hungry. They can see you when you're sad. And this is very important, that a, a person has a home. There, there are some people who have a physical home, but they don't have a mental home because they can't be vulnerable in their house. 
And what do, what do these people seek? They seek shelter. They seek shelter. As you grow up, as you become more and more men, there's going to be a time where you say, look, I love you, mom and dad, but it's time for me to, to leave. Not because the roof is broke and the rain dripping on your head. Not because mom's cooking is not no longer delicious. It's because you're growing mentally and you need what? More space. You need more, not physical space, because you can live in a mansion. Peace of mind. But you need that peace of mind, exactly, that we grow into as adults. So when you see, as you get older and older, you need more space. You don't, you, as you get older, you're not going to want a lot of people in your space. And you need more space. Why? Because you, you need more time to be vulnerable. So that means you need more space. And that often sometimes means we need to change the people that we, be, uh, that we are vulnerable with. This is a whole concept of marriage. Someone where I can have a different type of vulnerability with, and that I can grow with. And my children, can, can, see, can I, 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 I can develop something, my own, develop, uh, uh, my own vulnerability shelter. And some of us, our relationships with our parents and our family members are so tight that you could be 80 years old and you just, there's so much space in your family because there's so much love and there's so much just caring there that you don't ever have to leave home. You leave home because your mom and dad says it's time for you to leave home. And you never want to leave that vulnerable shelter because they know the importance for you to go out and kind of figure out vulnerability for yourself and figure out life for yourself. And then there's another aspect to shelter, which is almost kind of like the mental aspect, but it's slightly di different. It's the spiritual aspect of shelter, which is a little bit different from the mental aspect, and that's why I give it a different category here. And that spiritual aspect is something that almost cannot be explained. It, it, it almost cannot be explained. It's just you get kind of goof, goosebumps, those little bumps when you think about home. Any, anyone ever been to a place, you've never been to that place before, you've never been there before, but when, when, you, when you visit it for the first time, you just felt at home. You, could homesick. You, you, you just felt you just felt at home. I'm not, I'm not talking about homesickness. I'm talking about you 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 been you visit a place for the first time. You've never been there. And when you you get to this place, man, you just feel at home. You just feel like so comfortable. You, you, it's like you, you feel weird about it. It's like, man, I don't, I can stay here forever. Man, I can, I can stay here for, I, I, and, and you can't really explain why. There's no one giving you money or anything. It's just, you're just comfortable. For me, I share something with you. For me, it's New York City. Now, here's the weird thing. Here's the thing, weird thing about me and New York City. Okay. Here's the weird thing about New York City and myself. In America, we have something called social security numbers. It's basically mm -hmm. our national, basically national. our national ID number. We don't, we don't like to consider that a national ID number, but that's basically what it is. It's your national ID number, right? And you, that national ID number, that social security number, is uh, pro, is tied to, as I understand it, is tied to where your parents, where you live. Where you're from, where were you born, what city, what state you were born in. Okay. So different numbers will designate uh, where you were born, the state and city in which you were born in. It's kind of like a car has a VIN number, and from that VIN number, people can tell you, okay, this car was, this is this type of model car. It was 
uh, manufactured during this time. And your social security number can tell you the same type of thing about yourself. So later on, after my parents had passed away, I, I find out that my social security number does not match the state in which I was born in, which is Maryland. I was born in the state of Maryland. But I have a New York social security number. Specifically, I have a Manhattan social security number, given that the time I was born, the year I was born, and the, and the number, it coincide. I was actually born in Manhattan, or for some apparent reason, my parents got my social security card in Manhattan, which would not make any sense. So I, I find that it's pretty strange that I have this infinity, this love for New York, on top of the fact that I have a New York, specifically a Manhattan, social security number. And I specifically like Manhattan. I love New York City as a whole, but specifically Manhattan, there's something about Manhattan that every time I leave the city, I get sad. I, I feel a little bout of depression. When I'm driving, my hometown is about two and a half, three hours from New York City. And you can take one road to get there. It's kind of like when you get on demand road, you can take demand to get demand road to get the demand. You can take I-95 north from my city, one just one shot straight, and you can get to New York City. And as I approach exit, I think it's exit 11, which would be the exit I would take, which is the Lincoln Tunnel, to get to the city. As I'm approaching exit 11, like exit 10, getting close to 11, you see the, new, the famous New York skyline with all the skyscrapers and the, the water and kind of see, you kind of see the Statue of Liberty kind of in the background. And the feeling I feel every time I get to that point in my drive, it's like, wow, I'm going home. The interesting thing about it was 9-11 uh, happened on a Tuesday. And obviously that was a very sad day in American history. I felt so I felt so connected with New York City that that following weekend, that that following Saturday, I drove to New York City because it's almost like I had to go out, be home with my family. My family was hurting, and I had to be home to make sure my family, even though I don't have any family in New York, but. I'm so connected with that city that I felt compelled to go to New York City. Just to, and all I did was just walking around and it was a spiritual, a spiritual journey for me. It was a sp spiritual activity that I was doing. Cause all I was doing was just walking and, and as I walked the city, it was almost like I was hugging the city. And, and many people have these experiences when they go places, they feel so connected with these places. And for, for many of us, uh, for many of us, we, 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 we go all throughout our lives moving from place to place to find this spiritual connection. To find that, that, that spiritual connection. And some of us will never have that spiritual connection with home, and a lot of us will. And some of you have that spiritual connection with the house that you were born in. Or your current home. So the idea of shelter is one that is physical, mental, and it's spiritual. And it makes us the people that we are. Because if you really think about it, we go throughout life seeking three things every day. Every day we go throughout life seeking three things. Water, food, and shelter. 
and we define our lives, we build our careers, everything we do, most of the decisions that we make are really, if you really think about it, based on one of those three things. Whether directly or indirectly. Is there food? Is there water there? Food there? Is there shelter? No one travels anywhere unless those three things are available. You don't go on vacation. Well, I mean, unless you're an adventurous person, you don't go on vacation without booking a hotel room or booking or securing some place to stay. Right? How many people would go to Indonesia without booking a hotel room? Raise your hand if you would do that. Or go to France without booking a hotel room. How many people would go to Mexico without having money to buy food and water? No, we, just, we don't do that. And, then, and, at, and at the end of the day, every day that we do is based on this idea of home. Now, here's something interesting about home. Home is an idea, or has now become an idea of property. And property, I'm talk, when I say property, I'm talking about property from the modern sense. Because, before, because home and property, they go hand in hand. Today, in today's world, we look at property as, this is my bag. This belongs to me. Right? And I'm going I'm to deny you access. If I see you going in my bag, I'm going to say, man, why are you in my bag? Right? Why? Because I did not, this is my property, and I, I'm denying you access to my property. Unless I grant you access, you're not supposed to be in my bag. If, if, if I have property, land, real estate, and you're on my real estate, I'm going to say, well, I'm going to shoot you if you're there un uninvited. I'm going to say, what are you doing here? How can I help you? Right? Let someone walk in your home three o'clock in the morning. What do you want to do? <laughs> but that concept, that concept, if you actually think about it, is a relatively new concept in human history, which is really the extension of what we just read. It's the extension of what we just read. It's a relatively new concept in human history. Because before the Industrial Revolution, which really started this idea, before the Industrial Revolution, the idea of property was not to deny access. The idea of property was to gain access, to allow people to have access. And I respectfully submit to you that as we do another shift, and thinking, we're going to go back to the old way we view property. And we see this now. Now people don't, people don't care about owning things. They're renting. Use it temporarily. You go down, you, if you want to watch a movie, what? You, you download it for free. Right? Shouldn't do that. But we do that. If you want a song, you download the song for free, right? Because our ideas of property has now changed. When I was growing up, if you wanted a song, you went to the record store and you bought the record or you bought the tape or you bought the CD and it became yours. And radio stations would make sure in every song that they would put there, this is WABC. So you didn't want to take the song. Why? Because that song was their property because it was used on their medium, their platform. But now the idea of property has now changed. It's changing again. See, before the Industrial Revolution, before the Industrial Revolution, property was about access, giving people access. Look at, look at the Middle Ages. All right, you were wealthy. You had a castle. Feudalism, right? Feudalism. Everybody knows feudalism. What was the basic concept of feudalism? 
you had a landowner, wealthy landowner, and you had serfs, right? And the serfs did what? They worked the land in exchange for what? Living on the land, right? Was that the basic concept of feudalism? But here's the thing. The serfs look at that property just as if it was their land. You understand? If, 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 if a nobleman had a castle, it was not only him that lived in the castle. The whole community lived in the castle. The animals lived in the castle. This was your source of everyone's source of physical protection, physical shelter, mental shelter, spiritual. When, when a nobleman built a castle, when he built a compound, he did it for the benefit of everyone. It's just like when I go home and I buy something and I say, All right, uh, man, I, I like this thing. I like this pen here. I'm going to buy this for myself. This is going to be my pen. Right? And then I go home. I have two kids. I go home. I put that pen down. <laughs> it's not my pen anymore. Yeah. You understand? Because yeah. they're going to look at it and they're not going to say it's dad's pen. It's our pen. It's in the house. Because they still have, in their minds, they still have this old idea of property. That if it's in this space, it's public domain. Of course, it's not just yours, it's everyone. And we still have that idea of water, right? Don't we have that idea of water? That water belongs to everyone? That air belongs to everyone? Right? We still have that idea, right? Here's the funny thing about it. Water companies are trying to steal that idea from you. Because now they're trying to buy lakes. Yeah, they're trying to buy lakes and rivers. They're trying to buy it. They're trying to actually, because they're trying to implement this idea of property. This lake belongs to me. This water springs belongs to me. Belongs to government or, or certain people. It really, so the reality is it doesn't belong to government either. Water and air belongs to everyone. Certain people. Just like if you go in the ocean, right? Who, who belongs to, who's, who, who owns the ocean? No. no one. The ocean is everyone's domain. Everyone's domain. Certain, pe certain people are responsible for certain areas of the ocean for protection and all that stuff. But the reality is the ocean belongs to everyone. Why? Because we, for the ocean, for air, for water, we still implement this old idea of property. This property that everyone has access to. You understand? And it wasn't until the Industrial Revolution where people started to move from rural, rural areas to urban er areas that this, and, and the situation became dense in the city, and the city is dense, right? What does dense mean? What's this, what's the, what does the word dense mean? Order. 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 Uh, the amount of space you have left in a certain a given area creates density. That's what that's the definition of density, right? What you have left, and if something is dense, that means there's not a lot of space, right? It's full. It's, it's full up. It's filled up, right? And you can measure density, right? There's a there's a scientific equation of measured density. And so when when it, in rural areas. This density is not an issue because it's not dense. There's a lot of space. So because there's a lot of space, this idea of property really deals with physical, mental, and spiritual. We all need to be together in order for us to survive. We all need to be together. Come. Because I might own, I'm on, yes, I may own this castle, but I need all of us to make this work. I provide you protection by way of this structure, and we all and we all provide each other protection, physical, mental, and spiritual, by us all working together. What's happening in Puerto Rico? People with each other. Right. So because of the national disaster, we're reverting back to old ideas of property. Right? Because of the national disaster. And that's unfortunate that it takes a natural disaster 
to make us love one another and really care for one another the way that people used to do before the Industrial Revolution. Because it speaks to our greater sense of what is what we really need. We don't really need money. What we really need is each other. Because each other brings, fulfills these two other aspects, mental and spiritual. Yes, money can fulfill the physical, but it cannot fulfill the mental and spiritual aspect of what we need in order to really thrive as human beings. And every other, and most, not every other, but most animals need the same thing. Most social animals need that same uh, feeling. Communal living. Communal living. Communal living. This idea of community. So, the interesting thing is the reason why technology is so important is not only does it provide convenience for us, but it actually allows us to shift out of property as a as denying access. This is mine. Don't touch my pen. Don't be on my property. Don't drink my water. This is mine. Back to, hey, we all need each other. This is public domain. Yes, I pay for it, but everyone eats from this plate. Because I benefit from everyone eating from this plate. Make sense? So, that's another idea of home. And your generation is really going to lead this charge on redefining what the, what property is. So that's my, my talk on property as it relates to home. Uh, when we keep, we still going to come back after the next from the, from the 12 to 1 o'clock hour, but I'm just going to let you practice, study for your exams. I will take roll, but we'll, we'll, uh, we'll uh, practice for your exam, the 2 o'clock exam. Thank All right. Thank you All right. Much. Have a good day.